Hearing loss is an invisible disability. People live in silence. Currently, there are one and a half billion people with hearing loss. That's one out of six individuals. Patients who come in with hearing loss can be in very different states of mind depending on whether that hearing loss was very recent or gradually progressive. If hearing loss was sudden and profound, then people come in devastated because it's shocking. It's a completely new experience. It really disturbs their very core, their identity. And that's different than people who have had gradually progressive hearing loss. When it comes to hearing loss, there are two different kinds. One is called conductive and the other is called sensory neural. And to understand the difference, we can review how we hear. When sound comes in through the ear canal where wax is made, it vibrates the eardrum, which is located at the end of that funnel. That sets in motion the smallest bones in the body. They are called the malleus, the incus, and the stapes, which is the Latin for the hammer, the anvil, and the stir bones. And then these bones then set in motion fluids within the inner ear. The inner ear is an organ encased deep in the bone, and it contains sensory cells called hair cells. And when they are activated, they release a neurotransmitter, which is a chemical that now sends a signal to the nerve. And now this electrical signal is sent all the way to the brain, and that's how we hear. So, conductive hearing loss implies that sounds are not conducted to the inner ear. That can be because there is a hole in the eardrum, or there is fluid behind it, normally this is an air-filled space, or there is something wrong with these tiny bones, and that's conductive hearing loss. Sensory neural hearing loss affects the inner ear, where these super delicate, fine sensory cells and neurons reside, and all the other cell types in the inner ear. Unfortunately, our treatment options for sensory neural hearing loss are currently limited to primarily two types of devices, either hearing aids or cochlear implants. And each works well at one end of the extreme. Hearing aids typically work for people with mild hearing loss, and cochlear implants are reserved for people with severe to profound hearing loss. The way we perform cochlear implant surgery is that we insert the device through a natural opening into the inner ear, which is called a round window membrane, and then insert it very gently so that it goes along the length of the cochlea. Cochlear implants are not for everyone because it's a surgical procedure, and like any surgical procedure, it carries risks. And in surgery in general, we always consider the risk-benefit ratio. Currently, an average user of a cochlear implant gets a word recognition score of 60%. So that means that if they are asked to repeat words, they repeat correctly 60% of the words. And those who start from zero, complete profound deafness, or 20% or even 30% and now jump up to 60%, that's great. However, if someone has higher performance than that, the risk of losing the residual acoustic hearing that they have is not justified by performing this procedure. At Stanford Medicine, we can blend this compassionate, skilled, personalized patient care with cutting-edge research. Our hope for the future is to enable options and cures for hearing loss, or at the very least, better treatment options because hearing is such an essential sense for human connectedness.